All right, so this video right now, we're gonna be going over everything that you're gonna to have to do prior to Sumeru for resin-based materials, character materials that you potentially need, as well as the things on the Summer Island that you gotta know prior to it's coming out. And there are some very big artifact things that you're gonna to need to worry about prior to Sumeru. So if you're just coming back to Genshin or you have to like stop for a while, this video is to help catch you back up and let you know exactly what you gotta do prior to 3.0. Let's jump into it. All right, for those of you who are just coming back, you gotta know one thing. Well, in the Sumeru, there's gonna be a brand new element and that element is Dendro. Now in, for the Dendro artifacts right now, there are no Dendro artifacts that you can actually farm because the thing that's missing the most is Dendro goblets. So of course, what you're gonna need to do is save a bunch of really crappy artifacts. The reason you're gonna save these crappy artifacts is because you're gonna be using them for the artifact exchanger. And you can use the artifact exchanger to help get you Dendro goblets very early because you have zero of them. If you don't remember how long it takes you to get goblets, it takes quite a long time, especially when you look for a specific goblet out of there. So it's definitely worthwhile to save a bunch of five-star artifacts that you're not necessarily gonna need. You also notice that in my inventory right now, I have a bunch of plus four artifacts. I'm farming artifact roots in order to get more artifact XP, and I'm stockpiling that for a bunch of artifacts I wanna level. Now, if you haven't seen one of my previous videos, one of my previous videos, I talk about uh, the artifact exchanger and exactly what could be changing in the artifact exchanger coming in, uh, in 3.0. So just take a look out for that. There might be something interesting in that. Link to the description below. I swear. But it has been widely speculated that in, in Sumero, there's going to be an artifact that you're going to want to actually focus on a little bit more, and that artifact might potentially be an elemental mastery. The reason being is currently we are in an, an actual setup right now of an energy recharge based meta, and you people are basically going for emblem sets, trying to get their elemental burst up as quick as possible. But in Sumero, there's going to be a whole new element for Dendro, and this element most likely will be a transformative reaction that will be very similar to electro reactions and animal reactions, which are going to be based on just have, how much elemental mastery that you actually have as well as how much elemental um what character level you are there are also going to be some multiplicative reactions going to be put in there in the mix potentially in there that you can actually optimize with dendro so that's going to be a whole other thing if you haven't seen any leaks i'm not going to spoil you but just know that elemental mastery artifacts may be something you want to start start saving then you might want to save them with crit chance crit damage on substats energy recharge a bunch of different subsets so just try to save as many energy elemental mastery artifacts as you get over the next month and a half next thing we're going to go over is going to be craftables in inazuma there's um there we got a brand new setup of craftable weapons and we can actually surmise that in Sumero there's going to be the same thing. The question of course is are they going to take the Northlander Sword Belays or are they going to take something else? Well if they do take something else we do have a current transfer material right now for talent materials called the Dream Solvent and the Dream Solvent since it transfers over talent materials potentially this can be used in the future for other types of transfers but you want to transfer a specific type of prototype to another type of prototype. I don't know if that's going to be true or not but you know I've never looked at a leak. The other thing you need, of course, is Mystic Enhancement Ore. Currently, I have about 2,300 right now, but I also have 4,000 of these green doohickeys too, which are worth about one-fifth of the uh, the original. So I got almost 3,000 Mystic right now, a little bit, uh, probably a little bit over 3,000 Mystic. So I'd say roughly you would probably want to save about 2,500 Mystic Enhancement Ore, because if they are new weapon uh, weapons in Sumeru, you're going to probably want to farm out some of that in order to get your uh, prototypes leveled up for whatever prototype weapons you want to level right as they come out, so you can get them to level level 90 and weapons as we all know are very very inexpensive when it comes to resin cost because it's only going to take one to two days of resin to level up a weapon from level one to level 90 the thing that really handicaps you of course is going to be the mora that you're going to need to level up the weapon or potentially the um the mystic enhancement or because that is more limited but you're going to want to save as many prototypes as possible because you're going to make sure that you do have the prototypes that you want for the craftable weapons that you want and potentially have enough for refines. So make sure you're doing at least three weekly bosses every single week. The other thing to note is that the weekly boss materials are going to be starting to be used by some of the characters in Sumeru. Some of the materials might include materials from Ajada or potentially Raiden Shogun or even the Crimson Witch boss. I think the thing that you can say safely is that the Tartaglia weekly boss as well as the Devalon weekly boss and uh, the, the Wolf boss, all three of those are probably not going to be used by characters anytime in the future so i'd say these three weekly bosses are the ones that you can probably stop farming and the other three you might want to keep farming just a little bit until the new sumeru box well, weekly boss gets here and that will of course help you get the dream solvents that you do need if you're lacking dream solvents for talent materials for separate characters that are going to be coming up in, in inside of the new area or potentially talent uh, weapon material transfers if they transfer from this dream solvent material the stopwatch is glitched from earlier i just noticed that it's still there
Now there are a lot of bow characters in Inazuma, so I would recommend uh, bow characters in Sumeru. So I would recommend farming up some weathered arrowheads, sharp arrowheads, and firm arrowheads for certain characters in Sumeru. Uh, it seems like a good choice. Also, uh, while we were out there, we never really used any, the pollen, crystalline dust, or the fungal spores at all for any character. So for potential characters in the future, go back to the chasm and farm some of this stuff for potential characters that have never used this material ever. Because that just seems like a smart choice. And uh, since the Traveler always takes some type of uh, Hilatro materials, I mean, the, the Animo Traveler takes one kind, the, the Electro Traveler takes one kind, the Geo Traveler takes one kind, I'd say Hilatro Mask is probably a safe material to farm out for if you wanted to level up the Dendro Traveler. It's, it seems like a good choice of the things you could do. The next thing that we're going to talk about is the Golden Apple Archipelago. And in this area, we have Klee from last year, which was the great old time. But one of the things that you got to know about this area is that, of course, if you are just returning, it is a limited and it is completely different than the first time. And of course, all the events were time gated and the initial release of the islands were, of course, not a lot of chests. And then they slowly transformed to get a lot of chests with a brand new area. Lots of cool things on the side, transforming islands. It's very, very cool. So. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, it's awesome. It is really fun. I definitely recommend it. And the storyline will be gone forever. So if you miss out on it this time, you will not be able to see it in the future. So for all the quests and the things, the two, the two things that a lot of people are going to be most curious about getting, of course, is how many Primo Gems you get, how many, uh, can you get the free official, how long does it take, all that stuff. Well, you have to do all the event to actually get the official, completely finish the event. And of course, if you do want the official cosmetic, which is going to be the uh, resonating visions, you have to find 16 total conches. And you have to do part of the event in order to get this done. And you're not going to be able to complete this until you finish, I believe, day two or three. Uh, once you finish day two or three, then you can get the official cosmetic and it looks pretty awesome. You haven't seen it yet i do have it it's awesome it's very cool and some of this official's voice feelings kind of somewhat change a little bit but it's not a lot of changes and to figure out like how much you're gonna do on genshin impact what you're gonna do is of course go to the hoyo lab page on the hoyo lab page it'll give you a full chronicle of what you're doing in genshin and exactly what you're missing so if you look down here for the golden apple archipelago it actually tells you how many treasure chests you've obtained how many way way wider points you've unlocked all that stuff and gives you everything that you're missing uh, the total amount of chests that you're going to need to farm throughout the Golden Apple Archipelago, I believe, is going to be 182 total chests. 71 are from the domains. 182 are in the actual area. And there's a total of 20, 253 total chests. You wonder what that line was. It was actually from a stopwatch from earlier when we were timing our uh, artifact route run. And uh, we got the artifact route down to 13 minutes and 25 seconds. So that's what that little line was the whole, the whole video. CD the root, X, no, just go and check the link in the description below. And when we are going through the Golden Apple Park Pelago, there's also a nine world quests that you're gonna actually have to find out as well. So make sure you find all nine of those world quests and get them done. If you do not get these done, they will be gone forever and you will not be able to do them. I found a really weird looking lizard. Want me to show it to you? Nope. Oh yeah, and then as a last little side note here, very important thing for those of you guys who are Sweat Lord Trihors that want to mark everything on the map, there is only a total of 150 pins and they translate between multiple different parts of the map and they're probably not going to increase that when Sumeru comes out and if they do, it might even be a maximum of 50, which would kind of suck. So what I would recommend is going back to your map, finding all the things that you actually don't need pinned and unpinning them so when you get to Sumeru, you're not annoyed as hell. Well, that's going to do it for this video. My name is Sekiro Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, let me know what you guys are going to do for the Summer Islands. If you can find all the chests, or if you're not, whatever. Who are you going to be pulling for in Sumer? And in the comment section down below, you have a wonderful rest of your day.